we begin going through position groups and pointing out our top three players to watch at training camp. Then some odds makers and friends of ours have the top 12 most likely Super Bowl matchups with the Bucks leading the way for the NFC. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Box Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, joined by my esteemed co-host, David Harrison. You can check out all of his written work over at Sports Illustrated bucksgameday.com check out mine over at sb nations bucksnation.com and of course make sure you're following along on twitter at locked on bucks at jarco underscore bucks and at d harrison 82 thanks again for Thank making you. the locked on bucks podcast your first listen or your first view of the day today's episode is brought to you by joshua gardner who will agree <laughs> with every take that we drop on this episode per our twitter agreement go uh, buckeyes no, I, I don't think that is going to happen. But I also feel that it's very fitting that you're the one that's going to be talking about Kyle Trask in this episode. Oh, yes, I am. Cannot wait to get to that. We are beginning our positional looks at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers position groups, of course. And we're going to go position by position. Three players that we're keeping an eye on during this upcoming training camp. Of course, James, once we get through the list, we're also going to drop our initial initial 53 man roster prediction uh where i will be right and you will be wrong and all that will be well with the world will be well again but that's for a later show um james is just about to find out that we're also going to do one following the second preseason game and then we will do one following the final preseason game lots of opportunities for us to be very incorrect and for all of you to keep the receipts or save links on youtube to pull them up whenever you feel necessary right now we're going to start off with the most important position, the quarterback position, and I don't know how we're going to possibly fit three players from the quarterback group into this episode to talk about them. We have so many to choose from, starting with Tom Brady, because if you're ever going to see a Tom Brady-led team on the football field, I don't care if it's charity event, practice, walk through a game, you start by watching Tom Brady. The GOAT, the legend, the man who's on a mission for the eighth Super Bowl ring, of his career. And James, I don't know if you know this or not. Those who read BucksGameDay.com will know this. Tom Brady this year, shout out to CBS Sports, by the way, who actually did the crack investigative work, re the research to get this data. Tom Brady this year, if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers enter the playoffs as a wild card team, which let's be honest here, guys, really tough schedule ahead. Chris Godwin may or may not start the season. Uh, on, you know, probably not on IR, pup, but it may not be completely healthy to start the season. Rob Gronkowski probably not coming back till around Christmas. So it's possible the Buccaneers very, I would say it's even likely the Buccaneers enter the playoffs as a wild card team. If the Tom Brady led Buccaneers go to the Super Bowl, Tom Brady will become the NFL leader in postseason wins against NFC teams, passing Green Bay Packers Brett Favre. Just three seasons playing in the conference, James. That is what's on the line for Tom Brady outside well, of the eighth Super Bowl ring. Now, he would still get that even if they win the division as long as they're not the one seed, right? Because no, he has three. So he has three, two wins from tying Brett Favre. He has 10 wins against the NFC playoff teams as we stand right now. Right. So he needs three to pass Favre wild right. card divisional NFC championship game two to tie. Right. But only the one seed gets a buy. So even if the Bucs are a two seed, they're still playing wild card weekend. Well, that's what I, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Not okay. wild. Not, sure. my, my fault. My fault. Yeah. I said wild card. Bert. I meant playing in the wild card. Round. Yes. Correct. Gotcha. Good correction. Good catch. They're going to win the division, but I'm just saying they'll probably play wild card weekend, which is what will enable Tom Brady uh, to, to, to get that record. So, as we go through this and the Buccaneers get a loss or two, we can actually look at the silver lining that this is just setting up Tom Brady to be 
the winningest quarterback in NFL history against NFC teams in the postseason over the Favs, the Aikmans, the Rodgerses, the Breezes, the Montanas, the Youngs, the Aikmans. I mean, it's just incredible that he's going to do this potentially in just three seasons as an NFC quarterback. That is what else? What else are we supposed to say about this guy at this point? I don't like, know. What I else mean, can we say that the devil doesn't already own upon his death? Because that's the only way to explain this whole situation. Sort of him stripping on the sideline and dancing through an end zone to go into the tunnel, to the locker room mid game. I, I don't think there's anything that Tom Brady could do at this stage. It's like, Oh, that's surprising. No, it's <laughs> Tom Brady doing what Tom Brady does. Very oh, true. goodness. All right, well, let's move on because everybody wants to watch Tom Brady at training camp. Everybody shows up to watch Tom Brady. They tune in to watch Tom Brady. They buy two years worth of season tickets for only one guaranteed year of watching Tom Brady. So let's take a look at Blaine Gabbert, someone that needs to be watched during training camp. Why? Because what if something happens to Tom Brady? Obviously, don't want that to happen. But this is the guy that would, you would assume, take over. He was potentially going to be the starter for this season with Bruce Arians as the head coach. So you want to continue to see how well he plays, how well he's working with the new offensive line, or at least the new interior of the offensive line, how he's working with Kate Otten and Co. Keeft as the new tight ends, how he's working with Russell Gage as the new wide receiver, how he's working with Rashad uh, uh, White as the, the new running back. So you want to see how he's gelling because you know Brady's going to gel. He's going to be fine. He's Tom Brady. But it'll be important to see how Blaine Gabbert does in case he has to be called upon to go in and uh, and play any meaningful snaps. No, absolutely. Yeah, you absolutely want to see how the veteran is going to do uh, with his teammates and with the opportunities he gets to finally actually get some snaps because we all know backups don't get a lot of snaps uh, once the season gets going. And then, of course, the third quarterback we're going to be watching in training camp is potentially my least favorite, and that is Kyle Trask. He's <laughs> not actually my least favorite, but I would, I would rather watch Ryan Griffin personally. Uh, listen, I'm actually very excited to see Kyle Trask because I want to see, and this is kind of the, the, the question that I have for a lot of people. So during the premiere of our episode that dropped on Monday, uh, there was a, a Locked On Bucks viewer who, in the YouTube chat who was talking about how he would rather have Jimmy Garoppolo over Kyle Trask over Blaine Gabbert to back up Tom Brady. And I kind of said, you know, is it that you're just that high on Jimmy G or that you're that low on Kyle Trask? And basically the answer was both. And it's okay, well, you know, kind of expand on your Kyle Trask take. And his, his opinion was that Kyle Trask just isn't going to take this team to the playoffs. Said, well, it's interesting because we haven't seen Kyle Trask since last August. So there's a lot of things that could have happened with Kyle Trask. There's a lot of uh, mental reps, learning, developing behind the scenes, working out. You know what I'm saying? Like he's been getting developed and coached as well. Uh, it's not like they just put backup quarterbacks on the shelf and say, okay, guys, we'll see you next fall. No, they work with them uh, as well. So I'm very excited to see what Kyle Trask brings in the preseason because if we go through the song and dance again, where Tom Brady's no longer a Buccaneer, whether he's retiring or playing, I don't know, for the Miami Dolphins then the Kyle Trask conversation is going to come back up. And this will be our latest evidence we have to determine how we feel on the outside about Kyle Trask potentially taking the reins. One last shout out to Mr. Joshua Gardner, uh, who, by the way, as he was giving me grief, James, had the uh, the good sense to tag Kyle Trask, <laughs> saying that I'm down talking Kyle Trask. So I appreciate that at Chef Gardner one on Twitter. I I so if anyone wait. would like to defend my honor at chef Gardner one is the Twitter handle for Joshua Gardner at chef Gardner one, <laughs> by all means, please feel free. Um, by the way, Joshua, you are my third favorite Gators fan of all time behind Brandon Olson, a uh, host of the lots on Gators podcast and a good friend of mine who unfortunately for you and Brandon's chance of ever taking the number one spot died in combat and is a reason I'm in sports media today. So that's never going to happen. I can't wait until we're at camp and you try to talk to Kyle <laughs> Trask and he's like, oh, you're the YouTube guy that hates my guts. Thanks you're the guy that Josh turned me on to. I know you. Um, no, I, I am very excited to watch Kyle Trask. I got the opportunity to watch him at camp last year, and, and I'm curious to see what differences there are between my experience watching him last year and then, of course, what he endured over the course of the year with the learning and the work that he had to put in and what improvements there might be because 
you we just don't know what the Bucks have in Kyle Trask. I would not be ready to hand the team over to him next year. They would have had a better chance to win. You know, if Brady had stayed retired, Blaine Gabbert gave them a better chance to win than Kyle Trask did this mm-hmm. season, in my opinion. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on on Trask as much as possible. Absolutely. We're also going to be keeping an eye on the running backs, and we're going to tell you which running backs in which order of priority we want to see them this coming training camp. And we're going to do so thanks to our friends over at betonline.net, where you can go see all the latest odds because they are your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including everything going on with this year's Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And betonline.net remains your best spot for all your podcasts and news this season. Betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and putt-putt. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at BetOnline, where the game starts. Thanks for making Lockdown Bucks your first listen or your first view of the day. Time to move over to the running backs, James. And there's plenty to talk about here. Ronald Jones is officially a trader with the Kansas City Chiefs. Future Hall of Famer and Arizona State Sun Devil superstar Rashad White has finally arrived to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Lenny is back, of course. Giovanni Bernard is back. Keyshawn Vaughn is looking to prove to everybody that the doubts that we all seem to be carrying in this Commodore is more overblown than the confidence that people had in former Commodore's quarterback, Jay Cutler. Uh, golf is a sport, and let's start with Leonard Fournette at the uh, at the running back spot. And of course, David, it wasn't that long ago that you and I were talking about Leonard Fournette and how he was out of shape, and you know we had no worries that he you know would show up to camp out of shape. We knew he would bounce back. He's a professional athlete. He knows we had no doubts ball. he would show up to camp in shape. Right. That's exactly <laughs> what I meant. We had no. We had no doubts that he would show up to camp still out of shape. No, no, in shape. I can English. (laughs) Um, So (laughs) you threw me off with your golf insult. And and frankly, it it hurts my feelings that you continue to do so. Leonard Fournette is the bread and butter of the running back room, right? And I'm that's not a fat joke. He is the three down back. He is the pass catching back. He is the everything back. He's no longer in a timeshare with Ronald Jones. And that's not to say that he's going to get 100% of snaps because no running back is going to get 100% of snaps. He's still going to have to come off the field and be spelled and, and you know, going to get some breathers. White's going to get his opportunity. Vaughn's going to get his opportunity. But there's no more Ronald Jones drives, Leonard Fournette drives. Ronald Jones drives, Leonard Fournette. That, that's gone. It's yeah. Lenny, RB1. So want to see how he kind of, for lack of a better term, how he behaves mm-hmm. and knowing that he's the guy. Is he complacent? Is he kind of resting on his laurels a little bit because he knows Ronald Jones isn't there? Or is he even hungrier than ever to show that he deserved the extension that he got, that he deserves to be that RB1? Is he helping out the rookie? Is he trying to mentor Keyshawn Vaughn and get him to the level that, you know, Keyshawn Vaughn could potentially reach? How is the dynamic? So the dynamic, of course, starts with the top guy, and that's Lenny. Yeah, the tone setter for sure. Absolutely. The leader in the room and, you know, the undisputed uh, RB1 as of right now. But you're right. If he comes in with a less than advantageous or a less than desirable work ethic, which we're not predicting necessarily that he will. Uh, but we it's happened before in the National Football League. It'll happen again. And when someone just, boom, it's my job and nobody's going to take it, then they kind of come in and they kind of coast a little bit. Um, is that going to be what Leonard Fournette does or is he going to come in with that fire, with that hunger uh, and, and all those things? And if he comes in with all of his talent but doesn't work hard, right? The old adage goes, hard work beats talent. When talent doesn't work hard, Rashad White is definitely going to come in looking to work hard. And James, I don't know. If another Buccaneers running back draft pick has been uh, has had more excitement from the fan base around him other than or outside Rashad White since Jeremy McNichols, which is weird because Jeremy McNichols was a late round draft pick. But Jeremy McNichols, what excitement was around him was why? Because he was coached at one point by Snoop Dogg. Right. You remember the draft day video where he calls yeah. Coach Snoop and Coach Snoop was like, oh, I'll go get him young fella in a much cooler way than I'm saying it right now. And 
And Jeremy is like, oh, yeah, appreciate you, Coach Snoop. And then, of course, he comes from Boise, which is where Doug Martin came from. And Doug Martin had just had an amazing season. So Jeremy McNichols is going to be the next, uh, you know, Boise Broncos muscle hamster uh, to don the Buccaneers uniform, even though I know he hated the muscle hamster nickname. Um, Rashad White, though, the ex- the excitement about Rashad White is because of Rashad White and because of his talent, because of what people are seeing and even hearing from those who are on hand in the early offseason practice session. So if Leonard Fournette rests on his heels a little bit, then I got this job, it's on me. Rashad White is definitely going to come in and put in the effort to try to unseat him. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I, th- I still think Leonard Fournette runs through the season as RB1. But like you said, Leonard can't carry the entire workload by himself. No NFL running back really can. You see what happens when the Titans try to make Derrick Henry do it. He ends up getting injured, banged up, and misses some some critical games. For Rashad White, though, I'm looking at training camp as being the start of one of the better, I'm not saying the best, but one of the better rookie running back campaigns we've seen out of this franchise. Now, the best rookie campaign, we were talking about this before we recorded, Doug Martin, 1,926 all-purpose yards, which a lot of people may have actually blanked because of the way that Doug Martin's time ended. Uh, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but nearly 2,000 yards of all-purpose offense from young Doug Martin back in 2012. 1997, work done, 1,440 yards. Cadillac Williams, my heart breaks every time I say your name. 2005, uh, 12, over 1,200 yards of total offense. And then the final rookie running back, Eric Rett, back in 1994, 1,130. Those are the only rookie running backs to ever net 1,000 yards of total offense. I don't think Rashad White gets there, James, but Ronald Jones had almost 500 yards of total offense last year, Mm -hmm. which kind of felt weird to me because I'm like, man, you know, I don't know what I would have predicted if I just got asked that question, but 500 feels like a little bit more than I thought that he actually had. So if you look at Rojo and what he was able to do with the, I mean, let's call them minimal limited touches that he really got. I want to see Rashad White get like seven, 800 yards of total offense. And I think that's a reachable amount if he makes good on the hype and our expectations. And James, that puts him above Bo. Bo Jackson's rookie season, granted with the Raiders, not the Buccaneers, 690 total yards of offense. So if we can get better than Bo out of Rashad White, I think that's a pretty good return on investment in year one. Yeah, I think that's a little too optimistic. I think it's going to be closer to the Ronald Jones 2021 numbers than it would be above. Hey, look, we're still in Ricky Bell territory. I'll take Ricky Bell. Yeah, and, you know, again, reminder, even though Cadillac only had about 1,200 total yards, he did set the record for most rushing yards by a rookie in the first five weeks of uh, of a career. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Those are all purpose yards. So, yeah, like you said, just, there are some specifics in there as well. Stupid John Gruden running him into the ground. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm excited to watch Rashad White. I'm excited to see kind of how he's being used in the offense, uh, what kind of, of plays Byron wants to get him involved in. You know, what kind of looks is the offense going to be in when when White gets to touch the field? Is is he going to have any kind of, of set plays? Are they going to run some some two back looks with Lenny and Please. White? It, it, it would I think it would behoove them, but we'll see. And, and of course, they're not going to show everything, you know, just at, at training camp practices. We're going to see some wrinkles throughout the year, but excited to see how he's kind of integrated into the offense and of course the third running back to keep an eye on at training camp is Keyshawn Vaughn Keyshawn Vaughn had plenty of opportunity last season with the injury to Leonard Fournette Ronald Jones going into the doghouse um you know it can he take that next step can he continue to improve on his game because we've seen flashes but then again we've also seen some cringy not so great Doug Martiny type moments where he just not Doug Martin, who's Charles Sims. We've seen some Charles Sims moments out of Keyshawn Vaughn. Don't want to see those anymore. He needs to take the next big step and really become a, an integral part of this running back room, especially in an in, in age where there's so many committees and, and you can use so many different backs for so many different reasons. Uh, Keyshawn really need to take that next step. Coming up, we are going to talk about the Buccaneers taking a giant step towards their second Super Bowl in three years. But first, this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need 
why endure pointless and seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand that their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. You can save time and money. Why would you choose to spend 30, 50, 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership when you can go to rockauto.com? They're a family business serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Their prices are reliably low and they're the same whether you're a professional or you're just a person that likes to work on your own car in your garage at home. They have everything you could possibly need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, carpet, anything you need. RockAuto.com has it ready for you to find. Go explore their easy to use website and find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to RockAuto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Wrapping things up here on a Tuesday edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast. And thanks to our good friends over at betonline.net, they have released their top 12 most likely Super Bowl matchup odds. And the Buccaneers continue to be the favorite in the NFC. So the top 12 most likely matchups, according to Bet Online, at number one are the Bucks and the Bills at 22 to 1. After that, it's the Rams and Bills, the Packers and Bills. You see where the AFC is going with this. Followed by the Bucks and Chiefs rematch sitting at 33 to 1 odds. The Rams and Chargers, David's favorite AFC team, also at 33 to 1. Then you have the Rams and Chiefs. The Rams and Chargers, the all LA Super Bowl that nobody will watch because that's terrible and nobody wants to sit through that. You have the Packers Chiefs, the Packers Chargers, the 49ers Bills. Then at 45 to 1 odds, you have the Bucks and the Broncos coming in at number 12. 50 to 1 odds, you have the Cowboys and the Bills. Yeah. That 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 Bucks Broncos is a whole lot of yikes. I don't know where. The, the Broncos just randomly and the Dallas Cowboys just randomly get through the, the odds makers like what if just craziness happens like right what if what if Roy Kent just becomes a Marvel superhero that maybe the Dallas Cowboys can make it to uh, the Super Bowl so I mean just 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 the thing what are you what are you shaking your head for look uh, the the Bucks and the Bills uh, 22 to 1 the number one option here uh, by betonline.net uh, I love it because that is my Super Bowl prediction that's not really so much a spoiler because it's my Super Bowl prediction from last year I stand by it if everybody is healthy. So, of course, I'm going to carve and copy that here because neither team has gotten all that much worse. If anything, they've actually gotten better. The Buccaneers have kind of uh, got some holes that they've got to prove that they can fill. Uh, but I also just love that uh, the Green Bay Packers are third because, um, or at least in the NFC representation because, I don't know, the media's love affair with Aaron Rodgers has just kind of made me dislike him a whole, whole lot. Yeah, I, I could see that. And, of course, the most represented team on this list is Buffalo. They had five appearances, Tampa at four. Then the Packers, Rams, Chiefs, and Chargers all appear three times with the Niners, Cowboys, and Broncos each appearing once. So you kind of see, and David, it's a conversation that we've had before. When you take a look at the AFC, I mean, this list doesn't represent it quite as well. I'm, I'm surprised that the Bengals – didn't appear on any of the, I mean, I would say the Buccaneers and Bengals is more likely than the Buccaneers and Broncos. You don't yeah. see the Ravens on here who have a phenomenal roster. Last year, they were decimated with injuries, decimated with, with COVID issues. They got better. So you have some staunch, staunch teams in the AFC. And then it goes back to kind of what we've been saying over the course of the last few weeks is there's really only three teams in the NFC that are legitimate Super Bowl contenders, and that's the Bucks, yeah. the Rams, the Packers. So let the AFC beat the crap out of one another, uh, and then whoever emerges from the NFC, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, will waltz to a, uh, a championship because the AFC will be beaten, bruised, battered, broken, and braided. Deep fried. Um, I also want to know from the Ozmakers, they're not going to tell me, but I would like to know if this 49ers prediction 
is with Jimmy G or with Trey Lance. Because if you got Jimmy or if you got Trey Lance leading the Niners out of the NFC to the Super Bowl with 45 to 1 odds to go up against the Bills, um, I would have a lot of questions. The first one being, how dare you? Yeah, I I would also be curious about that. Um, maybe they're just kind of assuming it's going to be a combination of the two. And Jimmy Garoppolo will probably end it end up taking over later into the season because Trey Lance is not it. But David, not in the script of, of things that we were going to talk about, something that I found very interesting, and I would like to know, hopefully you haven't seen this, this graphic or this list. Yeah. Do you know which NFL team has the most expensive offense in 2022? This might be the greatest thing i have ever seen the las vegas raiders the detroit lions get out of here at 120.9 million dollars that's insanity imagine spending 121 million dollars to have the 29th ranked offense in the nfl yeah you know he the the detroit lions are actually one of ross jackson's top three nfc teams that need to have a killer training camp this season um, Locked on NFL podcast. I co-hosted with Ross on today's episode of that. Um, I was a little surprised that he picked them, to be quite honest with you. But uh, wow, that's that's a lot of cash for what's going to be a top five pick. Well, and coming in at number two, only a half million behind the Lions are the Washington Commanders. Really, really. It's kind of surprising, actually. Yeah, the rest of the top 10, the Cardinals, Titans, Cowboys, Patriots, Ravens, 49ers, Vikings, and Browns. Browns, thanks to that fat Deshaun Watson contract that's going to get them a lot <sighs> zero snaps this year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I saw that. I just I could not believe it. How are you spending $121 million on offense when you can't score 14 points a game? Like It's just it's so bad. That is craziness. All right. With that, David, if if you have to if you have to lay down some money with our friends at Bet Online mm-hmm. on one of these odds, but you are not allowed to take the Bucks Bills, which of the remaining top twelve most likely matchups do you feel is the most likely? Rams Bills. If it's not Bucks Bills, it's Rams Bills. You are just hammering the hammering the bills yeah and honestly and this is gonna this is gonna really throw people for a loop who've been listening to us consistently um after the bills i would go chargers <laughs> bucks chargers or rams chargers well yeah it's bucks chargers then ram i think look if the bucks and rams are both healthy i think it's a coin flip i think it's just a, a break here a break there an inch there a bad spot a bad penalty here or there uh, that really tips the scales in a playoff matchup if you know if they're not both healthy then i think whoever is healthier comes out on top obviously um but i just i think it's bucks rams one in one a and i think it's packers three like number two is whoever benefits from both the bucks and rams being completely decimated by injuries and then it's the packers and then it's uh i don't know everybody else who's gonna be watching the super bowl yeah, I, if I'm taking one that's not Bucks Bills, I'll I'll go for the rematch. I'll go Bucks Chiefs. Um, I think even without Tyreek Hill, the Chiefs are a dangerous team, and I'm gonna be interested to see how Juju does in Kansas City. <laughs> I I like Juju, and I think he's gonna fit well down there. I think he's gonna get along with uh, yeah. with Patrick Mahomes, and he certainly has a TikTok buddy now. Hopefully, I was gonna say hopefully we don't have to watch any TikToks with him and Mahomes' brother and Mahomes' wife because. Hard pass, no thank you, reported and blocked everywhere. With that, we are getting out of here. Thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen today. Now make your second listen. The Locked On NFL podcast, our national NFL experts and insiders. Keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league because an offseason does not equal a break in action. If you have questions, comments, reactions, concerns, hopes, dreams, anything at all, go ahead and email them to locked on bucks podcast to gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 813-444-5841. I will be joined tomorrow by 10 Tampa Bay's Evan Klosky. He will be back on the show. David will get a much needed day off, but you can check out all of his written work over at bucksgameday.com. Check out mine at bucksnation.com. 
Follow along on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked On Bucks.